All right, guys, it's Ozzy Grimm with the Gamers Grimm, and we are back in Starfield today to go over another one of my ship designs. And in my endless pursuit of perfection, uh, this is another iteration of the Imperator, but this one has changed out quite a bit, so I've renamed it the Praetorian. And uh, unlike the Imperator, there are some snapping tricks that I've done to make this ship work. Uh, the Imperator had maybe two, but there's three or four on here. So this is the Imperator. It is a Class C ship, but it does have a Class B grav drive in it. Um, and as always, remember, guys, to like, subscribe, and share. And it really helps when you comment down below for the algorithm. So make sure you leave a comment, and uh, we'll get back to the ship. Uh, again, this is the Praetorian. It is a variation of the Imperator, my home ship, uh, and it is my endless pursuit of absolute comfort, uh, utility, and uh, really just cool design. And uh, the Imperator and the Praetorian uh, accomplish that uh, tenfold, I think. Uh, but yeah, the Praetorian is a, a really nice ship. It is an in-game ship for sure. You're going to need to complete some quests. You're going to need to have high-level starship design and high-level piloting to make the Praetorian. But it is an amazing-looking ship. Um, so we will pop in, and you will see the difference between the Praetorian and the Imperator. While they have the same cockpit, many of the habs have been changed out and some of the design. It is, after all, a ladderless design because that's what we want to live in. Don't want to be going up and down ladders all the damn time while we're in a ship. But we will come up in this companionway, which will take us to this Hope Tech Commander 500 bridge. And uh, that's where this is at. And we will come back into this well, Hope Tech mess hall, pages. which has uh, quickly become one of my favorite mess halls uh, to have because it has an entertainment system in it, uh, as well as the uh, galley and seating areas and a fairly large pantry so it's, it feels and looks very comfortable um, but we will have several habs back here uh, to the starboard side we will have ourselves a workshop like you see here and then there will be a companion way that takes us over to the computer banks to buff our crew uh, like the imperator there just happens to be uh, some companion ways up here tayo uh, and they are just there to maintain the silhouette of the ship. You do not need to go in there at all. And this is where I did one of the little snapping tricks. This is where our dark docker is uh, here in the computer banks. And we will head back through the workshop and into the uh, mess hall here. And you'll see that there's a center door as well. This is another Tayo uh, hab that I've used to control where my doors are so that I have three doors uh, right beside each other. But this is an infirmary uh, so that you have access to the pharmaceutical uh, workbench. And then, of course, back here we have ourselves an all-in-one Hope Tech berth. Very comfortable. Got a TV, a seating area, another galley, plenty of sleeping for you and your crew. And then through this companionway, we have ourselves a uh, captain's quarters. And then here is, of course, the completely useless storeroom slash companionway. But that is just there for looks. We can keep that door closed. So what we will do is we will head up and into the cockpit. And we will take off so you can see the Praetorian in space. Need something? Not much. But thank you, Miss Betty Hauser, my favorite companion. Though I am married to Sarah, I love taking Betty Hauser everywhere with me because Betty Hauser is, of course, an absolute beast in combat if you give her an explosive weapon. But in addition to all of those habs, the Praetorian comes with 7,600 baseline cargo. Um, and unlike the Imperator, one of the things I changed out 
was uh, putting a Class B uh, grav drive on the ship uh, because it, you really don't need the Class C grav drives to do uh, most of the quests. Class B is just enough. Uh, you, it, it is nice sometimes to be able to jump as far as you can with a Class C, uh, but in many cases you're not jumping as far as you uh, can with the Class E grav drives, so it's always good to have a Class B grav drive. And as you can see, I did a little bit of the snapping uh, duplication uh, glitching with the engines so that we can maintain that really amazing silhouette along the top of the ship. Uh, one of the things that I didn't like about the way the Imperator looked was that over the top of the ship it got kind of bulky trying to find a way to squeeze the uh, reactor and grav drive in and in this build we were able to sort of sneak the big reactor back here and then right underneath we put that class B uh, grav drive that you see up there just like that and uh, but with lots of cargo and lots of habs and lots and lots of creature comforts and it is max stats in uh, all ways <coughs> you can see here I actually have uh, a couple of points to spare, uh, but there's really no reason to uh, try to maintain that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the build menu and we're going to pull the uh, Praetorian apart for you guys so that you can see how I built this ship. So you can build it for yourselves. Alright guys, it's Ozzy and we are back in the ship builder and we have uh, the Praetorian pulled apart here to a certain degree i'm not going to take it apart piece by piece we're just going to go over the sections of the ship and uh, how to build them as it is mostly a vanilla build with the exception of a handful of snapping techniques uh, so we will start with the center fuselage area you're going to have yourself a hope tech 500 commander bridge and a hope tech storeroom fuselage b and connected to those you will have an MG6 uh, landing bay. And what you will then do is take and connect your Hope Tech mess hall behind that. It is a three by or two by three. And then you will have two Hope Tech all in one or Hope Tech two by ones on either side. And this is where you will use the Tayo uh, two by one top A. And the reason we do this is there are no doors on these top A's, so we can make sure that there are no doors where we don't want them. We have one, two, three doors right next to each other, and that way we can control where the doors go. And uh, of course, behind that, we have ourselves the Pinch 8Z reactor, like you see here, and it'll snap just uh, behind that Tayo. And beneath that, we have the RD3000 Beta Grav Drive from Redline. It is a, it's got a 36 grav jump. Uh, not bad compared to the 45 or 50 that you can get from a Class C. So you're only giving up a little bit of your uh, grav jump distance uh, so that you can maintain a really nice, smooth silhouette across the ship uh, from front to back. Um, and underneath that, of course, we have a bunch of our landing gears. You're going to have a whole bunch of these pinpoint 4G landing gears from Tayo. Uh, on this particular part of the ship, we're going to have six of those. And then we do have uh, some Stroud Eklund cowling that goes just like that. Um, but we will have cargo as well. But these will uh, be ascending in their weight. The Polo 2000 in the front, the Polo 2010 in the middle, and the Polo 2030 in the rear. Um, that's how we're able to max out a lot of our co cargo, is we got our, we've got this ship pretty much scaled all the way to the near maximum mass uh, that you can have. Uh, but that is the general layout of the central fuselage. I do have my Assurance SG-1800 shield generator right here. And that is one of the things that we are going to use a snapping technique to hide. So, 
Moving along, we do have a couple of windows uh, on the, the mess hall here. Those are completely optional. Um, but over the top, we're going to have a Stroud Eklund Cap A and some Stroud Cowling. And then we're going to have four of these Galleon S203 cargo holds. And it's going to sit right over the top, just like you see there. And then that is mirrored over here with the... Uh, cap, the cowling, and the two galleon S, uh, cargo holds. And they go over just like you see. And then we do have some Nova cowling just for some decoration to really create that nice silhouette in the front of the ship. So we will go here to the rear and we will put the first of our uh, engines, which are of course the SAL 6830 engines. For those of you who are watching, you have to complete a quest on Neon, um, and you will get it from Mr. Eklund uh, in Constellation. And uh, just as a fair warning, no spoilers, you need to complete that quest with uh, the best positive outcome that you can in order for it to functionally work. And this is where we're going to use the first of our little snapping or duplication techniques uh, and all you really need to do is duplicate that engine and then duplicate this one here. And there you have your other two engines uh, that go just like they do and maintain that nice silhouette from front to back. And so we will go here and we will look at this center, uh, center spine that we're going to use. It incorporates our gas tanks or fuel tanks, which are 500T helium-3 tanks, and then we have a Demos tail A, and then a bunch of Demos spines that go up. But in order for us to make all of this work, we're going to put this first Nova cowling down like you see here, and it goes right behind this. But what we're going to do is we're going to transform that into the 2LTF so that it creates a nice silhouette that comes up from that Hope Tech storeroom fuselage and it looks really good. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to hide our shield. And how we do that is, um, oh, we're going to have to probably do it this way. So we're going to put this down and we're going to put this one here. And what we'll do is we'll flip this one up like you see, just like that, right? And then we'll take and put another one on top of that. And then we'll take another one and we'll flip it up and put it above our shield like that, you see? And our shield is now below this cowling. And then we will duplicate that cowling down and it will hide our shield. And then we can delete all of these goodies here because we don't know, whoops, I deleted that Tayo. I can't believe I did that. That happens. We'll go down here to our Tayo stuff. It's down here. It's the Tayo. Uh, and we'll turn it into an infirmary because that's what it's supposed to be. And uh, did I pass it? Yeah. All right. Back to what we were talking about. Now that we've hidden our shield, we can now take uh, all of our stuff here as one single piece. And we will attach it to that right there. And that is how you will get that silhouette. And everything should snap together nicely. Just like that. And now we do have two of these Nova braking engines. And they're going to go right here along the sides. And now we have our outward arms. Our outward arms are a fairly simple uh, setup. There's going to be one, two, three more of the Pinpoint 4G landing gears on each one of those. We're also going to take, take and use a Nova cross passage. And we'll go ahead and attach that just behind those Nova braking engines. And uh, we have our other Hope Tech 2x1s and those Tayo storerooms that we see there, as well as the uh, other two SAL 6830 engines uh, that we have here, and then a Tayo braking engine. And then we have our Nova cowling that goes along the side, decorated with a little bit of a Nova thruster array. This is completely optional for you. Um, so you can do these outward arms however you want. 
but this is where we're going to do uh, one of those little snapping techniques. That way we can hide our docker. I have uh, struggled since I started playing the game to find ways to incorporate my docker into my ships in a way that uh, didn't look like crap. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to leave our cowling on. But if you see, we have a Hope Tech 11 docker. It's a side docker and it's, it's hidden in there. And all you really need to do to make that work is you're going to take this uh, DeGamma 1000 cargo hold. It's one of our other cargo holds. And we're going to make and take a move our pinpoint landing gear out of the way here. But we will pull this out. And as you can see, it's not in there anymore. So what we want to do is we're going to get ourselves a very simple... We just need a companion way that we can snap right here underneath. And then we're going to attach... Uh, our docker like that and then we're going to duplicate that docker and we're going to let it go up and into that nova cowling so that it is nice and hidden away you don't see it and it stays outside of the ship just like you want it so it doesn't it doesn't interfere with anything and that's what's really good about it but we also have some of these Ademos spines along the outward arms here as well. And we did have that DeGamma 1000 cargo hold that goes underneath just like you see here. And then we will take and attach those arms to that Nova cross passage just like you see here. And we do have this mirrored over here with the exception uh, of the docker we don't need that we have our additional engine the nova cross passage the three pinpoint 4g landing gears the tio storeroom and another hope tech two by one as well as the demos spines and the braking port braking engine from tio and then three nova cowlings of course a nova thruster array and we will attach that um, the weapons loadout that I use is I use two Disruptor 3340A 30, Auto Alpha turrets, which is strange to me because 3340 Alpha, that's how you would say that, so it's 3340 Alpha Auto Alpha turret, but I, I guess that's the, the way it works. Then I do have over here, I have two, of course, the PBO 300 auto alpha turrets uh it's my favorite tur uh, uh, auto turret in the game and then i have them supplemented with two obliterator 250 mev alpha turrets as well but that's because i have max turrets and max particle weapons uh so those things just absolutely shred for me and uh, i'm lazy and i don't want to have to aim anything i just fly around and let the turrets do the work but that is of course the praetorian it is a variation of the Imperator. It is my home ship. It is my favorite ship. And I am constantly trying to make it better, cooler, funner, and more uh, just the best ship that can possibly be made in the game without using any mods and any crazy snapping techniques. Um, but that would be how you build the Praetorian, my friends. And I hope you enjoy uh, the ship as much as I do. And I want to thank all of you for coming along and uh, having a good look at our ship for the week. So this has been Ozzy Grimm with the Gamers Grimm. You all have a wonderful week and we will see you next time on the Gamers Grimm.